name is Rosalinda Amares, and I am with the Passenger Safety Project with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, a program funded through the Texas Department of Transportation. Whether this is your first, second, or third baby, we know that it can be overwhelming with all of the information on how to take care of your new baby. We hope that this video can help make it easier on ensuring that your baby's first ride home is a safe one. Make sure that you have the right seat. An infant only seat begins at four or five pounds and can go up to 22, 30, and even 35 pounds. There's also the convertible seat. The convertible seats typically start at five pounds and go up to 40, 45, and there are even some that go up to 50 pounds. You will want to keep your baby rear facing, at least until the age of two, or preferably until the weight limit of the seat, which could be longer than two years old. It is also important for you to know the history of your seat. You don't want to purchase a used car seat if you do not know whether it has been in a car crash or not. Car seats need to have all of its parts and not be on a recall list. It is important for infants to ride reclined and rear facing because they do not have much strength in their neck or spine to hold their heads up. If their heads were to fall forward, it could close off their airway. Riding reclined and rear facing keeps their head, neck, and spine aligned. And if they happen to be in a car crash, the forces of the car crash would be loaded onto the back of the seat. The seat we are looking at is a rear facing only seat. It comes with a detachable carrier with a handle and a base that stays in the car. This is convenient for moms that are out and about as the child can be left in the carrier and taken out of the car. Now we are going to look at the harness straps. The harness straps need to be at or below the baby's shoulders and they need to be snug. This is the chest clip. We will discuss this at a later time once we're putting the baby in. This is the adjustment strap that tightens the harness. Some seats do not have this front adjuster and have to be adjusted from the back. Notice that this seat comes with padding to help even a very small infant fit in the seat. If your seat does not come with padding, do not purchase it separately as it is not crash tested with your seat and may be dangerous in a crash. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to buckle the harness and tighten it. First, I'm going to buckle in both parts of the latch plate. This part is called a chest clip. We want to make sure it will be armpit to armpit on the child. The purpose is to make sure the straps are on the baby's shoulders to keep the baby in the seat. We want to make sure that we push the pads on the strap up a bit and are out of the way so that they do not interfere with the chest clip being armpit to armpit. The slack in the harness should be pulled from the hips all the way to the shoulders to make sure that there is no slack lift. To check to be sure the harness is snug, you should not be able to pinch up any of the webbing at the baby's shoulders. Now we are going to place the infant into the car seat. Make sure the baby's bottom is fitting into the bottom of the car seat. We want to make sure that the harness straps will be at or slightly below the baby's shoulders. First, we will pull the straps over the baby's shoulders one at a time and then buckle both parts of the harness latch plates into the buckle. Then buckle the chest clip together. You can temporarily move the chest clip down a bit because as we tighten the harness, it is going to start to move up. We are going to make sure we have all the slack out of the harness system by pulling up the slack from around the hips and working it up towards the baby's shoulders. Pull slowly on the adjustment strap until the harness is secure. Again, if your seat comes with harness pads, make sure to push up those harness pads so that they do not interfere with moving the chest clip into the position across the chest, armpit to armpit. Test to see if you can pinch up the webbing. 
and if needed, pull the harness adjuster strap a little bit more to make sure the baby is snug. Now, just double checking that the harness is at or below the baby's shoulders, the chest clip is armpit to armpit, and that there is no slack when you try to pinch the webbing. When it is cold outside, you can bring the baby out to the car with a coat and blanket, but you do not want to put a bulky coat on the baby under the harness straps. In a crash, the bulky material will compress and there will be slack in the system that will allow the baby to move, which can cause a serious injury. Instead, take off any heavy jackets and put the harness on the child snugly. Then you can place the jacket over the child. The child can even be covered with the blanket over the harness. You can even swaddle the baby over the harness straps by taking a blanket and tucking it all around the baby. The first thing you want to do is decide where in the car you want to install the seat. Remember that you never want to place a rear facing seat in front of an airbag. Your car seat should be installed in the rear seat of the vehicle. The rear facing child is considered to be the safest passenger in the car and the center rear seating position is the safest place in the car because it is the most protected from any side impact crashes. After you have chosen the position in the car that you will install the car seat, you want to make sure you have the correct angle. This seat, just like most of the seats that come with a separate base, has an adjustable foot on the base that moves up or down to create the correct angle for your car seat. For a newborn, we will start by bringing the foot all the way out, which will put the seat in the most reclined position. Then we're going to apply some pressure on the car seat to check the level and make sure that it is where it needs to be between the two lines. So we can see that it is too reclined. So we are going to adjust the foot on the base and check it again. We're gonna apply some pressure and then check on the level indicator. This time we know we have it right. The car we are working with has two sets of lower anchors which are indicated by these symbols on the upholstery, one set on each outside position. Check your vehicle's owner's manual to see where your lower anchors are. Some vehicles will have a set of lower anchors in the center position and some may allow you to borrow inner anchor from each outside position to create a center lower anchor position. But you must make sure that the car seat manufacturer will allow this, borrowing of the inner anchors. This car does not allow this. However, you can usually get a good installation using the seatbelt system instead of the lower anchor system in the center position. First, we are going to start by showing you how to do an installation using the lower anchors in this outside position. The first thing we need to do is find the lower anchor straps on the base. Every car seat needs to have a place to store the lower anchor straps when you are not using them. Let's look at the lower anchor connectors to see if there is an up arrow or any other direction that shows how they need to be placed. With these, we do have an up arrow that must be pointing up and the writing on the connector tells us that the printing must face inwards towards the seat. Always be careful to check your car seat manual and make sure how the lower anchors should be used. Now, push each anchor connector onto the lower anchor bars in the car to make sure that you have made a good connection. You'll usually hear a click. The best method to install any rear facing seat is to get behind the seat and use your body to press the base down into the upholstery. Now while applying pressure on the base, pull up on the part of the strap that tightens the lower anchors until you have all the slack out of the system. Now put one hand on each side of the belt path and test the seat to make sure it does not move more than one inch from side to side or front to back. If it doesn't, then this seat has passed the car seat test. Take one more look at the angle indicator to make sure you are still within the correct angle. Now we are going to install the same base using the seatbelt system in the center position of this vehicle. When installing a car seat, you want to use either the seatbelt or the lower anchors, but not both. And this is because they have not been crash tested that way. Now let's start by testing the retractor on the seatbelt. Slowly pull all of the webbing out of the retractor until you come to an end. Usually you'll hear a click. Let out about six inches, go back in, and pull on the webbing to see if it is staying locked. 
We want to make sure that the angle is correct before we begin the installation. So once you've checked that, then we'll go ahead and pull the seat belt out and pass it through the belt path and buckle it in. Once you buckle it in, then you'll pull on the shoulder part of the seat belt to get any excess slack out. So we're trying to shorten the lap part of the seat belt and make it as short as possible. So you can get behind the seat and using your body weight, press down on the seat to compress the seat into the upholstery and pull the excess slack using the shoulder part of the seat belt. This seat has a nice extra feature on it and it has what you call a lock off, which are these orange slits that are on each end of the seat. You want to use the one closest to the retractor. So again, you're gonna press on the seat Pull the excess slack, and then once you feel you have it nice and tight, then you're going to slide the seat belt into that lock off. And then you'll do a test side to side and front to back where you don't want more than an inch of movement. Now, because this car seat has the feature of a lock off, the manufacturer does say it is optional to activate that retractor on the seat belt. So again, pull out the webbing until you hear that click, and then you can just let the rest of the webbing go back in as it locks into place. You do not have to do any more pulling on the shoulder belt because the seat is already locked into position using that built-in lock-off. Recheck the angle to make sure that it is correct. We are now ready for mom to put the baby in the carrier and snap it into the base. Make sure that you hear the positive click to know that the carrier has been locked down into the base. Again, recheck the angle now that the carrier is locked into the base to be sure it is in the correct angle that the manufacturer has indicated. Check your car seat's manual to find out what position the handle needs to be in. This car seat manufacturer allows it to be in any locked position. Now that you understand how to correctly harness and install your car seat, your baby is ready for its first safe ride home and any ride after that.